Hey gang, Ante Jolic here at Real Pro BJJ with my buddy Vic. He's uh, helping us out today with some uh, mount attacks. Uh, earlier you might have saw a previous video where we did the Ezekiel choke. Now we're going to add a complimentary attack, the uh, classic cross choke. So here we go. I'm going to get a punch your head down. Here. So, when we were in a lower mount, we were hiding our feet under our partner's back pockets. Uh, crossing maybe our toes. Uh, if not our feet outright, or sole to sole, whatever you liked, as well as grapevines were as an option. Uh, now we're climbing up higher a little bit to attack. Our foot positioning is gonna change. We're gonna go from under our partner's hips, behind the glutes, to stepping on the hips. So first we're gonna put the brakes on the head, I'll show you what that means, and dig our knees high. Whenever we can climb high, we start to expose our partner's uh, neck and arms a little bit. So, a lot of times when you're up here, let's say you're in mid-mount, your partner isn't always going to have a nice, neat, tucked-in gi. It took a while to get in here, but if you see they're a little tight, uh, nice and tucked, just open them up a little bit. Some people really love to open up their own gis, as well as turn their uh, belts around to kind of avoid clogging the lanes. That's personal preference. Um, but if you're finding that the lanes are getting clogged a lot for your hands to work in, I recommend you try it. So we put the brakes on, we climb. I dig my knee in his ribs and high into the armpit, then I step on his hip. I repeat that on the other side, and I posture tall. Why am I stepping on his hips? When he tries to press downward, it's harder for him to get me down because I'm standing on something. That thing is him. From this point today, I open up, let's say he's defending his neck. I go under his arms, and my goal is to beat both arms. Try to avoid gripping and then slide. Rather, just focus on sliding down the train track that is his lapels without jamming yourself up by closing your fists. And think about grinding your form down their torso. Now you take whatever grip you can get at this point. And let's change hands. The whole time I'm trying to sit back, but in the beginning, when I get this, I just I want to avoid being bumped. You use your hands. Oh, okay. Sure. You're okay. My contact point is the thumb side of my wrist for this initial choke. I'm going four fingers in. Thumb on the outside, palm up. Okay. As I slide down, I'm always ready to lean away from the first grip. Because if I don't, if I'm leaning over it, he's going to roll me over. So my right hand is in, I lean to my left. Now, from this position, there's a ton of routes out. But I'm, normally, I'd be using my head down, leaning away, trying to have a heavy form and cooking them a little bit. When I'm ready, I'm gonna start to try to get my second grip in. Don't rush this. Your partners are gonna be bumping, trying to roll you over. Focus on maintaining the dominant landmark. Keeping your knees out wide like little kickstands if the, as they're rolling. Heavy pressure with your fore. Not giving them the business with the point of your elbow. It's the entire fore. When you see your opportunity, your head goes to the side of your first grip. My hand comes around and I move his head with my tricep and forearm, creating a chance for my thumb to come in. I put my weight on my knuckles, or my hand, excuse me, not his face, and still my right forearm on his uh, chest. I wiggle down. I put my head down. And he magically taps, no. I row back for the finish, and my wrists bend towards the palms. And whatever the contact point is on my wrist to his neck, I jut that into. So my first grip, it's the thumb side of my wrist. I bend my wrist towards my palm, and I jut that wrist into his neck a little bit. On the other hand, it's the pinky side. So I bend my wrist towards my palm, and I jut that little contact point in his neck as I row. So, it's very important not to choke your partners with the flat side. 
of your forearms, but the pinky side or the thumb side? All these years you thought they were telling you to hang loose and relax. They were really telling you I'm going to choke you with the thumb side of my forearm or the th pinky side. Now you know a little secret. Okay. So here we are. Hiding his neck. My job is to beat his forearms going underneath as deep as I can, leaning away, posting as necessary. I'm high, stepping on his hips. Head down for real, not on the top, but on the forehead as a kickstand. When I'm ready, my head comes over. As it does, my hand is a kickstand so I don't slam my head into the floor. I gently move my partner's head over. So there's a little kink in his neck in a wide open lane for my thumb to come in. Don't smash your buddy's face at this point. Scoot your hips down over theirs. Anchor your hips with your neck, uh, with your legs. Head down. Flex your wrists. Jut them in his neck and row. Your head won't be on the floor, it'll be off the floor, usually. When they bump, don't be afraid to use it as a little kickstand, but let it be close enough that you're not headbutting the floor. But rather, it's just a, either a graze or a gentle touch, so you're not taking any dings while they're uh, flailing away at the very end. There. Just a simple, basic cross choke, classic variation. Thank you so much, buddy. Sure.